breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys! It's an iconic scene in Robotech. Max Sterling is heavily, heavily outgunned. The Zentradi hordes are closing in. He's alone in his battleoid. The streaking missiles come in from all sides, but Max turns and with an easy, easy looking just flick of his gun pod, destroys all the missiles. Today is an episode we've been putting off for a long time. <laughs> we've entitled it as we kept moving it down our to do list. Fucking, fucking missiles. missiles. How, How do, do they, they work? work? <laughs> <laughs> so missiles haven't changed all that much. There's a lot of things to consider when you're when you're dealing with missiles. You're dealing with range, reloading, counting how many you have. I mean, this is this is basically the equivalent of yes, you do need every arrow in your quiver on your character sheet <laughs> because you absolutely do. And what type is it? How far does that one go? What's its MDC? Because you can destroy missiles. You can destroy missiles in various ways. Missiles are complicated in Palladium. They, it could have been streamlined, but this was a... I think this was a boxer moment for, for Kevin. That There was a lot of thought put into this. And uh, he's, he's stuck with pretty close to the original throughout all the systems. When you start with them, you're probably starting like I did. Oh, God, did... We didn't even look. Does mechanoids have missiles? Uh, I don't know. It might have. I know we mentioned missiles several times. I don't think it does. Quick pause. Okay, after a, a, <laughs> a brief look back, uh, there, there were missiles in the mechanoids, but they were not fleshed out at all, so... I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb, correct me if I'm wrong, O viewing public, that the missile rules started with Robotech. I think so. Now, that that's because the uh, Robotech is such a missile-heavy show. There, there are clouds of missiles unleashed, and they had to develop some kind of of way of dealing with that, and dealing with that in a cinematic way. So you can launch missiles... In singletons, doubles, or in a full salvo, just flushing your racks. Now, the interesting thing is how you can destroy missiles. And this has stayed true ever since. You can try and dodge, and you can try and shoot them down with, you know, some sort of slug, some sort of, like, plasma and or slug weapon. Or you can try and get them to commit fratricide by shooting your own missile into them, which has the highest success. Now... It should be noted that if you succeed, you have a percentage chance of detonating the entire volley coming in at you. So by this game system, when you see Max Sterling turn and just kind of swipe his his gun pod at the incoming missile storm and, you know, let out a, a, a small burst, that's what happened. He hit one of them and the rest went off. Yeah, there are a few... Very minor differences just in some of the formatting, but the rules from Robotech were directly copy-pasted into the original Rift's Butts edition. And the only difference is that Rift's adds mini-missiles. Which is weird, because the term mini-missile uh, has been used in Robotech throughout the books. Yeah, I didn't see mini-missiles in the first book. Yeah. So they might have added it in later books and therefore also added it to Rifts. And that I couldn't yeah. really tell you who came first. But I know that the Robotech rules came before Rifts simply because yes. I think Robotech was where Mega Damage started. Now, um, it's also important to note that it wasn't a direct copy-paste. Robotech missiles are a bit sissy and a bit broken-legged. How so? Well, for example, uh, a light, uh, a high-explosive short-range missile in the in the light category does 1d4 times 10 in Robotech. In Rifts, it does 2d4 times 10, which is a substantial change. There have been some conversations online that I have been witness to about missiles and the damage that they do in the Rifts role-playing game. And I'll tell you what, 
I understand why missiles do a limited amount of damage and range. Even if you look at the missiles table in the Rift's Ultimate Edition, and you look at the damages that they do, even like the long-range intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles, they do a decent amount of damage, but only at a small blast radius. And I get why. Yeah. The reason is... And I don't know if this has ever been stated. It may have been, but there are very few instances of world destroying weapons that you can get in any of these games. It may seem like everything is super overpowered, but there's really nothing that you can get easily on an equivalent scale that can just destroy a fucking city unless you yeah. are yourself operating at a higher scale, such as flying a galaxy cruiser in phase world and firing down upon a city and a planet kind of thing. That said, that doesn't come through in Rifts or Robotech, even where you have these huge muni munitions, which can and have been used to glass planets. The, the reflex weaponry. I get that those are in the fiction. I believe that the goal was to not make it a mechanic that yeah. players can oh, no, just agreed. build around. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, well, we're playing this game and you're this hero and I'm this hero. My whole thing is I can nuke planets. And I'm like, yeah. why are we playing with you? <laughs> I think the highest it goes to is 4d6 times 10. Yeah, the missile damages are strange. Even stranger are the missile rules. Firing missiles isn't very straightforward because there are layers of modifiers that you have to figure out which ones you're using based upon which kind of attack you're firing. You have to figure out whether or not you're firing guided missiles or dumb missiles. And unfortunately, it isn't always that obvious. Many times the That's text true. will say that all missiles are dumb missiles until the text says that all missiles aren't dumb missiles or gives all of these extensive rules for guided missiles. And you're like, if all missiles are dumb missiles, and why are there guided missile rules kind of thing? It's very confusing. The modifiers sometimes don't quite make any sense. And the the dodge rules are like, you, you can only dodge X number of missiles, and then you just can't dodge anymore. <sighs> but what if you're in a big-ass fucking robot and flying through space, and your name is Max Sterling? Why can't you dodge yeah. all the missiles? Max can do it. <laughs> he can't, though. He, he has to blow him up. Not always, though. Those were some sweet moves that he did, but he was mm. really good at flying around, getting away from the missiles. Yeah. Yeah. Rick, not so much. Crashed <laughs> all the time. And, and Ben, you know, well. <laughs> that was his name, right? The one that died? Ben? Yes, Ben. Ben didn't make it. <laughs> no. <laughs> missiles are also, they're kind of like grenades. You have, you know, your traditional fragmentation then you have your your he your high explosive you have things like uh napalm or incendiary but you also have some non-traditional things like smoke fire retardant now interesting sub note fire retardant missiles only came in because there's one very brief scene in the cartoon where they fire missiles at a fire to put out a fire while the sdf1 uh in the final bits of macross is uh, the city around it is burning. That is the only time that has been used. But yet, that missile has been carried all the way from Robotech into Rift's <laughs> Ultimate Edition. And there's no goddamn reason for it. You don't fire missiles at a fire. <laughs> but it's an anti-fire missile. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible idea. The issues that I have as a GM with missile systems is running them in a way that makes them cinematic. Because as we have said in this episode and multiple times prior, when you as a GM or you as a player get a hold of missiles, your thought probably ventures to land on Max Sterling or any other anime where there are these scenes of battles of missiles flying left and right and just filling the air with explosives and you somehow survive kind of thing you want you want that to be cool you don't want it to be okay no roll roll for that missile oh 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 carry carry the three okay no roll for that okay no roll for <laughs> well these three fired in a different launcher so we got to roll them separately that's just not fun the only difference is is that you you can do it that way and the rules provide for it even as far back as Robotech. Interestingly enough, it only costs you a single action 
to go after a volley of missiles to attempt to detonate, not dodge or cover yourself or, well, you can't really parry, but you you could, depending on, on your skill, you could dodge four, you, you could detonate four or five volleys coming at you. And honestly, I think this is a really great way to take the visuals from the show and bring it to the gaming table in a, in a fairly realistic way. I, of course, as many GMs do, have my house rules, and they cover missiles. <laughs> so if anybody is interested in seeing my house rules for how I manage missiles, I will gladly share them with you. I've taken a lot of inspiration from the Palladium system rules. I haven't like completely gutted them. I've just kind of trimmed them down a little bit to make them a bit more cinematic. Yeah. Yeah. I've still got volleys, still got the ideas of counter volleys and defense screens and, you know, anti missile missiles and stuff like that. And shooting them down is always fun. Always fun. I just want it to be a little bit simpler. You know, something else I wanted to talk about while Robotech didn't have the, the world destroying missile, uh, Rifts does. There's a nuclear multi warhead that moves at Mach 3 and does 2d4 times 100 mega damage. At what blast radius? 50 feet. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> the blast radiuses of those are so limited. <laughs> yeah. Like, but 50 feet. <laughs> I should be using nukes for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go back to Rifter number one and we look at that comic of that guy who just nuked everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then blew the world up. <laughs> Just think about the, the quantities of missiles that would take for every 50 feet. Every 50 feet, yeah. I would say that's the most glaring problem with a missile is, is the blast radius. And one thing I've always wanted to do in my own games is designate a difference in damage. Now, Rifts does that uh, to a degree. If you're the target of the missile and it actually hits you, you get full. Anyone else within the blast radius takes uh, half damage. And that, that's what they save or dodge or roll or punch against. I've always wanted to add the kinetic energy of the missile itself. A missile is moving real fast. And I understand you're, you're assuming like you're in a robot suit or in, you know, armor of some kind that you're dealing with, you know, hyper dense, near magical alloys of defensiveness. <laughs> but at, at the same time, I always thought, and maybe that's just too crunchy, that there, there should be something for the kinetic impacts even if it was only like a knockback rule yeah i like the idea of a knockback rule in fact note to self add a knockback rule in your house rules <laughs> npc when you listen to this later do it yeah that's about it missiles they're, they're incredibly contained in this and if you're dealing with an end of the world situation like let's say it's rifts and someone has stumbled onto an old u.s missile base and they're threatening to blow up the surrounding countryside and the village you're supposed to defend. That's a great plot, but just realize that the 10 nuclear missiles there can't even take out a whole football field with their damage. If you go by the, if you go by the rules, mm. what I would recommend doing is instead of going by the rules, make them a hand wave device. You don't need to get yeah. those missiles damage. Those missiles yeah. destroy cities. You just call it good. One of the things to remember in any game you run is always go for the cinematic whenever possible. Always go for the feel or the tone. Uh, if if the rules don't cover it, just let just let people know. Yeah, and 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 go for whatever tells the better story. One of my favorite house rules that I've started using is if you roll ten points or more total bonuses over your attacker's defense. You just get to say how much damage you do based upon your weapon, of course. You don't say, I do 7,000 points of damage. It's more, you get to say, I do max damage, or I mm -hmm. do minimum damage, or I do X amount of damage. I fire whatever. Warning shot across his, the left side of his ear. I don't know. But with a roll that high, I like the idea that we can just skip the damage roll. Tell me how much damage you do, and let's move on, because that was a good fucking shot. And with, I like missiles, that. with missiles, I think the same. Like, you know, if you hit them square on so well that just all of those missiles congregate on that one target, just max it. <laughs> max that yeah. damage. Let's see. Missiles don't translate uh, across systems. For example, you can't take a Rifts-era CS missile and strap it onto a Veritech. It just won't fire. The systems are different. 
Uh, it goes into that in the conversion book. So remember that if you're uh, moving from system to system. The Megaverse Builder book also yeah. goes over uh, incongruent technologies. Yeah. Remember that fire retardant flame. I mean, it's there for a reason. <laughs> Apparently, it's something we really need. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got nothing else. <laughs> yeah. That's how Those fucking are missiles, missiles work. That, that's how they fucking work. <laughs> And we finally got it done. NPC, I'm kind of proud of us. Woohoo. <laughs> We've been moving that one down for like four months now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, when we come back, we're going to go into one of uh, NPC's favorite topics about uh, the Palladium system. So we hope you join us for that one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. 